In this video, I will demonstrate how to build a tilt compensated compass using the BNO055 9 axis motion sensor with ESP32 feather. I will also talk about the magnetometer, what is it, how does it work. The primary reason of creating this video is to derive the turn coordinator or the EO estimation. So far, I have derived the roll and pitch estimation using sensor fusion algorithm. I used complementary filter and the detail of the complementary filter is demonstrated in the previous episode. Once I determine the EO, then my sensor orientation will be completed with some limitation. If you have not watched the previous video on accelerometer, gyroscope, low pass filter and sensor fusion along with the complementary filter, please check the description below. You can also visit my Patreon site to read the complete paper. So without any further delay, let's deep dive into it now. If you are new to this channel, please consider to give a like and subscribe. That means a lot to me. Before begin, let's understand what is magnetometer sensor and how does it work. A magnetometer is a device that measures magnetic field or magnetic dipole moments. Different types of magnetometers measures the directions, strength or relative changes of magnetic field at a particular location. A compass is one such device that measures the direction of the ambient magnetic field, in this case the earth's magnetic field. Other magnetometers measure the magnetic dipole moment of a magnetic material such as a ferromagnet. For example, by recording the effect of the magnetic dipole on the induced current in a coil. Magnetometers are widely used for measuring the Earth's magnetic field in geophysical survey to detect magnetic anomalies of various types and to determine the dipole moment of the magnetic materials. In an aircraft's attitude and heading reference system, they are commonly used as heading reference. Magnetometers are also used by military as a triggering mechanism in magnetic mines to detect submarines. A magnetometer studies the magnetic field to determine the orientation and direction in the space. In the IMU device, magnetometer output the value of the magnetic field in terms of voltage or current. This is achieved using the principle of Hall effect. According to the Hall effect, if a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, voltage is generated across the conductor, which is perpendicular to the current directions and the magnetic field. Let's consider a sheet of metal connected to a current source left to right. That means evenly distributed electrons across the sheet will be moving from left to right. Please note the term I used evenly distributed. Now when the metal sheet is subjected to a magnetic field, the density of the electrons in the metal sheet will be changed and the electrons will no longer be evenly distributed. Due to this disturbance, voltage gets generated across the metal sheet perpendicular to the current direction in the same plane. Now question is, why such voltage get generated when magnetic field applies? Every moving electrons travel to the current direction with a velocity. And when magnetic field comes to play, force is applied, which changes the direction of the electrons. The magnitude of the force is dependent upon the magnetic field, charge and the velocity. The direction of the force is perpendicular to both the direction of the magnetic field and the velocity. Due to the change in electron density, the potential difference across the metal sheet is also changed, which causes to rise in the voltage to the direction. When the current is constant, changing the direction changes the magnetic field which impacts the force vector. Changes of the force vector impacts the voltage. Measuring the voltage changes, we can tell the direction of the magnetic field as it is perpendicular to the voltage. This idea seems to be perfect to measure the direction based on the magnetic direction, north and south of Earth's magnetic pole. But what if another magnetic interference presents near to the magnetometer, like a real magnet, or a coil in which current running in it, or an iron nail, or a metallic structure? In this case, magnetometer's accuracy will be doubtful. Such issues are sorted by calibration process. These external interference are called hard iron and soft iron sources. Without such interference, in the perfect world, if we calibrate the magnetometer by rotating it all around in the radian direction, we will get a perfect sphere, with the radius being the magnitude of the field. The hard iron sources are something that generates its own magnetic field, like an actual magnet. 
If we try to measure the external magnetic field, the hard iron sources near to the magnetometer will contribute to the measurement. If we rotate the magnetometer around a single axis and measure the magnetic field, the result will be a circle that is offset to the origin. It means magnetometer will receive a larger intensity in one direction and smaller intensity in opposite direction. On the other hand, the soft iron sources are something that doesn't generate its own magnetic field, say an iron nail. This type of metal bends the magnetic field as it passes through and around it. The amount of bending changes as the metal rotates with the device. So a soft iron source that rotates with the magnetometer distorts the measurement by creating an oval rather than a circle. Even if I have a perfect noiseless magnetometer, it will still return an incorrect measurement due to soft and hard iron sources that are near to it. That's the reason magnetometer needs calibration. With the calibration process, we rotate the device all around so that the process identifies the offset and transformational matrix that would convert it back to a perfect sphere centered to the origin. This transformational matrix and the bias offset would be then applied to each measurement, essentially removing the hard and soft iron sources. That's the reason we need to spin around the device in all the axes to use the compass. I have not implemented the visualization of such things. Maybe later when I integrate the device with Unreal, I'll create the visualization of the sphere before and after the calibration. Now that I know how magnetometer works, let's extract magnetometer data and see what are we getting. To do that, I extract the magnetometer vector output from my sensor and updated it in a variable called mag. After that, I have printed x, y and z values in the serial plotter. In the serial plotter, I am able to see the values. From here on, with any output I am expecting out of magnetometer, I need to calibrate the device. As BNO055 doesn't have any memory in it, so every time I restart the device, I lose the offset value. After calibration, I can extract the offset values and on restart, I can reset it back if I intend to use the device in the same place. After the calibration, I am getting constant value in X, Y and Z. But these values are raw values, which I need to convert it to an angle to estimate the north position. For that, I need to apply simple trigonometry, which is something similar to the accelerometer output trigonometry I applied it earlier. When the device is pointing to the north, the magnetometer x-axis will measure the magnetic field strength, where at the same time y-axis will be pointing to the east to west, where we will have very less magnetic strength. Now if I rotate the device towards east, both x and y-axis direction magnetic field will be measured. Now based on these two measurements, I will be able to evaluate the angle from north to east. To evaluate the angle, I will have to apply a tan inverse function between y-axis and x-axis. Let's call the angle EO. Here in the code, I have declared a variable called EO and to evaluate the EO in the loop function, I have applied tan inverse function and multiplied the output with 180 degree divided by pi to convert the radians to degree. I already have explained the radian in my previous video. Link is there in the description below. Finally, I have printed the yaw value in the serial plotter. Now it is time to test the code. To test the code, it is necessary to calibrate the device to eliminate the soft and hard iron sources. From the result, I could see magnetometer is correctly pointing to the north. However, there is some noise in the measurement. Changing the direction to the east, result is showing correctly the 90 degree from the north. Similarly, rotating to west, it is showing minus 90 degree from the north. That means the basic compass is implemented. Now let's try to see how magnetometer behaves with pitch and roll. On pitch or roll, without changing the direction, the compass is detecting some degrees. That is not the correct behavior. Such anomaly is because the implemented geometry is considering in the fixed surface assuming the sensor is in X and Y plane. Here is something to think about. The magnetometer field points north but it is also pointing to up or down depending upon the hemisphere. But it is not just a little bit. 
in australia the field lines are angled around 10 to 15 degree down or in north america it is angled almost 60 degree which means the angle deviation is mostly in the gravity direction the reason a simple compass points to north only but not to the down direction because the needle is constrained to rotate with the 2d plane however our magnetometer sensor doesn't have any constraints Therefore, it is returning a vector towards the gravity direction as well. So, to get the true north, we need to use accelerometer, which is true for the gravity direction. And it is not going to be changed. It means I need to do some cross products. Logically, down is the opposite direction of the acceleration. It means east is the cross product of the down and the magnetic field. Similarly, north is the cross product of east and down. So the orientation of the body is the rotation between the body frame and northeast down frame. If I build the direction cosine matrix or DCM based on the north, east and down vector, then I will get true north. At this moment, I already have implemented complementary filter to estimate pitch and roll. So I can use my evaluated pitch and roll to determine the yaw. The trigonometry is bit complex here and it is very hard to visualize. In my code, I have declared magnetometer x and y as a variable to store the DCM output. I also have declared two variables to convert the pitch and roll in radians. In the loop function, first I have converted the pitch and the roll to the radian and then applied the complex trigonometry to determine the magnetic x and y. Finally, I have passed the magnetic x and y to the tan inverse function to determine the yaw, which I have printed in the serial plotter. To test the code, I had to calibrate both accelerometer and magnetometer first. There is a way to avoid the calibration every restart of the BNO055 at the same location, which is by reading the offset from the sensor and keeping it somewhere to reuse. I will implement the same later in the future. Now after calibration, I could see the beautiful result. My yaw is stable and correctly pointing to the north, east, west and south with the rotation of the device. Now let's test the pitch and roll one after another and impact on yaw. From the output I can see the yaw is very stable when I'm rolling the device. As my trigonometry is depending upon tangent function, the problem with plus minus 85 degree will spoil the yaw estimation as well. This is something I need to keep in mind. Same way the problem with pitch also have been removed. If I try roll and pitch together like an aeroplane is banking, then I could see the device orientation is also changing at the same time. Overall, the result is quite satisfactory. So far, I have successfully evaluated the approximate pitch, roll and yaw based on the sensor fusion and direction cosine matrix. Although there are some limitation with the implementation, but it's okay to proceed with it for the time being. Till I encountered some issue in Unreal retargeting or in the animation. In the next video, I will send the orientation data to Unreal Engine over my Wi-Fi for 3D visualization and retarget the data to human rigid body. To do that, I need to implement the UDP protocol in both ESP32 and Unreal Engine first. Means more learning ahead and it will be fun. As you know, I am also learning and my resources are either Google suggested research paper or YouTube suggested videos on the topic. There are very much limited resources are available in the internet. Based on the time spent on the learning last few weeks, I have made this video to demonstrate my learning. I might be wrong and not able to explain it properly. If you could point out those problems, it will be a great help for me. So please comment and help me to rectify that. On that note, I am finishing this video here. Please stay tuned for such interesting topic and a solution. Till then, stay safe and take care. Thank you for watching.